throwing around the word goat, and I don't like that just yet because that's disrespectful for David Damer. But Volkanovski put on another brilliant performance on one of the best UFC events since UFC 189. I'm going to show you three ways that Volkanovski crushed Jair. Number one, small stance switches. So these aren't really deliberate planned stance switches. He's just covering distance here. Just kind of consistent stance switches. The reason being, Yai is looking to kick into that open side. This is the open side. If I'm switching though, it's hard to get that timing to kick to the open side. It's also hard to get a timing on kicking the leg because the leg's always moving back. He's more likely to whiff. And it's hard for him to get a timing on that big stump he likes to do to the knee. It's hard to get that timing because he's Volkanovski was always switching. Just busy little small switches. It's reminiscent of when Calvin Cater fought Giga Chikadze and was just stepping off to the side to close the door on that Giga kick, which was just a left body kick anyway. But it closes the door on that open side kick, makes it harder for him to kick the legs, and it's a really good strategy, even though Yai was never going to go for a takedown. It's a good strategy against wrestlers as well, because it's hard for them to find that front leg. It did Fail Volkanovski a little bit when Volkanovski started to have some small lapses in concentration. He started to do it on the back foot because Yair is such an ambidextrous kicker that he can time his step either way when he's got that space. Number two, old school ground and pound. So when it started in 1993 with Hoist Gracie, Hoist Gracie tapped people out from his back using his guard. Then wrestlers started to find out if I push people to the fence and crush the head to the fence, I can ground and pound, and it takes away loads of their submission threat. And then strikers figured out, hang on, they're pushing me to the fence, but I can use the fence to wall walk. Yair had some limited wall walking ability, even though he did manage to get back up once or twice. But, because Yair is so jiu-jitsu oriented, it let Volkanovski get back to the old school ground and pound. And the main thing with old school ground and pound, when forcing someone's head to the fence, the grappling dummy is stuck behind the ladder. And I am not manly enough or chuckle brother enough to move it. So we've got to use this teddy. But the main thing, when ground and pounding someone in the old school way, and this applied out in the open, is that head is on line with head. Bam, bam. And if not, it's getting reinforced with the frame of the collar tie. Always being aware what you're leaving out there, because you didn't get caught with the arm bar. If you started to do this, reach with one, this arm's in jeopardy. But he was always tight, his head was kind of reinforcing it. Same as striking on the fence. When this goes wrong is when the head ends up down here because that gives space for them to get the triangles. And it did go wrong slightly in round two towards the end where Volk just started to swing, he started to swing, and that's where Yair also had the space, boom, for the elbow that cut him. If he's up here, Yair has no space for an elbow. Boom, boom. If he goes down towards his hip, Yair can bang that elbow in. So old school ground and pound forcing people against the fence if they want to use a jiu-jitsu focused game. It's much rare these days, but it was reminiscent of Frankie Edgar's fight with Yair Rodriguez. And number three, because I am convinced that Alexander Volkanovsky's favorite striker of all time is Cedric Dumbay, and he's just, or Eugene Behrman's the city kickboxing coach, and they just stole so much good stuff from Cedric Dumbay, is a step down kick, step, uh, step down punch. So they throw the kick, in this case the inside kick, and step down with the right hand. Dumbay has done this absolutely loads in his career and this is the start of the end for the for the uh Volkanovski Yair fight. Not only he's throwing that inside kick, it's not that inside kick, it's kind of like a jab. But he can disguise it, he's throwing a few. When he's ready to throw his hard shot, he can inside kick, step back, his weight's loaded on his back leg, boom, and then he hits the right hook. This is really good because a lot of times you land that kick, people try and fire back instinctually, get that point back, especially a really good kicker like Yair. He's inside kick, Yair sees him on the open side, as Yair steps in to throw his right kick, Volkanovski takes that small angle out with the right hook and it hits him square in the chin. It's a beautiful move. Definitely, definitely so much stolen in the best possible way from Cedric Dumbay, one of the best kickboxers. If you actually watch Cedric Dumbay's fight with Holskin, it's kind of similar to Volkanovski's first fight with Holloway. But those are the three things. The little stand switches, old school ground and pound, and the step back, inside kick, step back, right hook. And then the finishing sequence after was beautiful. I was only realizing this watching the full thing in slow mo is how Volkanovski still just keeps fainting. He hurts him, and then the first thing he does is he doesn't throw a big strike, he just goes bam, bam, and gets him tense before throwing the finishing strikes and the takedown. 
subscribe to the patron so i can get a